Today we are kit bashing a Primaris librarian using exclusively bits from Indominus. Welcome to Zorp Zorp Gaming, my name's Lockel Linton Keen, and today we have a mental Indominus kit bash as we remedy the biggest emission from the box and smash together a Primaris Librarian. We'll be primarily using the Judicia and Chaplin models as our foundation, so if you've got a couple of those spare lying around, or if you just like the Spellboys more than those angry zealots, this is the video for you. We'll be focusing on the iconic symbols of every librarian, a sweeping robe and psychic hood, the humming power cables, a book of Law close to hand, and of course, a menacing staff and force weapon. So, let's head over to the bench and start channeling the warp. So up first, we're going to grab the large command sprue from Indominus and pick off the two main torso pieces for the Judicia model. These have got a fantastic foundation for our librarian with all that wonderful iconography and of course that huge sweeping robe that cascades down over his shoulders. Up next, we'll start to pick our arm selection and we're going to grab the big power sword arm from the Primaris Captain Sprue. This has got a fantastic shoulder pauldron with some excellent iconography and this will make a perfect force sword for our librarian. For our bolt pistol, we'll be grabbing the left arm of the Chaplain once again from that large command sprue. Now obviously the Indominus Chaplain is equipped with an Absolver bolt pistol, but it looks fantastic. Rule of cool, who cares? We're going to need to separate that left arm from the Chaplain's chest plate as these do come together as one piece. So I'm going to grab my scalpel and slice nice and evenly down that shoulder line. It's a very easy cut to make and you'll get a nice finish on both parts of those models. Up next, we'll grab the large shoulder pauldron that's designed to fit over that Absolver pistol arm from the large sprue. That'll glue together nicely, and that's going to give us a complete arm to work with. But of course, there is a lodging peg in the Judiciar body that's designed for the push fit arm. So we're just going to clip that away so that we've got two clean surfaces to work with. Now I'm going to be magnetizing all of these options on this model, but before we dive into that, we need to get this torso fully secured. So I'm going to bring in some plastic glue and glue these two halves together. We won't be using any of the normal push fit arms, so we don't have to worry about locking in any of these limbs before the torso plate goes together. Of course, the magnets are going to do that for us. To magnetize this left bolt pistol arm, I'm going to bring in some 3mm magnets and an appropriate size drill bit and drill out a hole in both pieces. And then I'm going to glue these magnets in with super glue because we're using metal and plastic components. Once you've got the first magnet glued and mounted in the bolt pistol arm, we're going to use a clever trick to make sure we never get the polarity backwards in our second magnet. So I'll drill my second hole into the torso piece, which seats quite well on this shoulder joint, even though it's a push fit model. Once that hole's ready to go, I'll fill it with super glue and then put a whole stack of my magnets onto the bolt pistol arm, locking it in place, and then just slide the magnet on the end of that stack into the hole. And now I know that those two pieces are the correct polarity and will snap together perfectly. That's the left arm sorted, but for our right arm, of course, we've got a massive cavity in this model. And this is because it's built to take the Judicia big choppy blade that goes up and over the shoulder, which seats inside the torso piece. So I'm just gonna grab some green stuff and pack that inside until I've got a nice even surface, which I'll be able to drill in and mount some magnets once this is all dried and cured. So our first right arm option is going to be the force sword from the Captain Sprue, but you'll notice when we seat it flush against the model as it currently stands, it's a very closed pose, so we want to open that up a little bit. So I'm going to bring in some green stuff, pack that in so that the push fit component is nice and flat, and then bring in a little bit more and start to wedge it out, thickening up the back section of the shoulder. The first thing we want to do is block out the general shape before we do any texturing, and then just bring in a little bit of water on my scalpel blade and start to carve in some lines to create that extra section of under armored venting that goes underneath the armpit. And that way we can simply extend the pattern that's there, build that out a little wider with a few little extra vents. And then we've got a nice wide join underneath our shoulder. I'm going to put that force sword to the side to dry for the time being, and now we're going to focus on our second right option, which is going to be our big honkin' librarian staff. And we're going to do that by taking the Crozius Arcanium arm from the Indominus Chaplain. So I'm going to grab that full piece, including the torso and part of his legs on the sprue, bring in a razor saw, balance that perfectly on my cutting mat, and then work back and forward until I separate the arm from the body. Once the arm is separated, I came in with my scalpel and sort of cleaned up the joint to kind of preserve the original 
original mounting position that wouldn't have been there with any of the leftover torso component fixing to the shoulder joint. Once again, I wanted to make this pose a little bit more dynamic with the way that it mounted to the torso, so I brought in a little bit more green stuff to expand that armpit joint and increase the width of that venting. Build up the general shape first using a bit of water on your scalpel to make sure that you can move the green stuff around and manipulate it really easily, and then use the sharper edge of your blade to come in and score those vent lines until you've got a really natural blend between the plastic vents that are already sculpted and the green stuff ones you're adding. And you can make this as wide or as open as you like depending on how dynamic you want this pose to be. So the green stuff in those three components we just sculpted is going to need some time to harden. So now we're going to focus on probably the most iconic piece of war gear for every librarian, and that's the psychic hood. Every librarian has that big, really iconic hood at the rear of his power armor that uh, helps sort of protect him and helps him regulate and channel his psychic energy. And we've got a fantastic piece that is going to be perfect to do just that, and that is the breastplate of the chaplain. Now this was left over from the bolt pistol arm. If we line the top section of that breastplate up with the back of the normal Judiciar power armor. It actually fits really beautifully. It mounts fantastic and then all we're going to need to do is slice off the back section and give that a little bit of a sand and some minor green stuff work and we'll have a fantastic looking hood. I decided to keep part of the Aquila as the top of that psychic hood to create a really accenting prow that gives the whole hood definition and then come in with my razor saw and cut down on two angles, essentially shaving off the bottom lower wings of the Aquila and creating that triangular structure that wraps around to form the back of the hood. With the cuts made, it's starting to come together, but then I brought in my file and really sanded back that whole surface at the rear of the hood to get a nice even transition. And you'll notice that there's a natural cavity inside this hood because it's a push fit model. And that creates a really fantastic channeled accent up the back of the hood that looks like it's meant to be there. And then bring in a little bit of green stuff and smooth any transition between the hood and the shoulders of the power armor. And with the hood complete, this model is looking more and more like a librarian. To complete the top section of the model, I grabbed the head of the chaplain. I really like this model's expression, but there's a whole bunch of different heads in the Indominus box you could choose. The Primaris Captain also had a nice unhelmeted good option, but I just liked the kind of half robotic bionic component and all of the various chaplain-y bits, which worked quite well as psychic amplifiers to match in with the librarian and every librarian needs a book. Now, uh, eagle-eyed viewers will have already noticed we just saw a book on that part of the Chaplin model that we looked at earlier, so we're gonna grab that. It's not gonna be a litany of hate anymore. It's gonna be some excellent psychic lore ready to unleash the power of the warp. So to separate this book from the Chaplin model, it is a little tricky. It uses a combination of snippers and again, my razor saw. You can separate the cuts by putting a few snips in and then bringing that saw in and slicing and dicing until you've got that piece separate. This will do a bit of damage to that chaplain model, but you could try and resurrect it later with some green stuff. But who cares? We got the book. The back surface of the book might need a little bit of a clean up with your scalpel and your file, and then we have a decision on where to mount it. Now there's a few little options. You could put it around his back on the back of his waist, just like the chaplain. But what we're gonna do is add this to the front, right in a really kind of visual focal point, so that when you're looking at the front of this model, you instantly see his spell book, and you see, oh yeah, he's a librarian. But what I'm actually gonna do is magnetize that position, because I am all about customization with this model, with his gear. He's gonna be a crusade, model. I want to be able to swap cool stuff around. I'm just going to use the same magnetic process as I did before. With a quick war gear test, this model is really starting to get a bit of presence, and now that green stuff is cured, so it's time to jump back into our magnetization. This is the exact same process, but do take a little bit of care to line up these joints appropriately. We've got some really dynamic posing in these right arms, so you want to make sure they mount the torso piece in the correct way. So line up your first magnet in the center of that shoulder joint, and then spend a bit of time locating the arm on that joint, and then grab your scalpel and mark the center point of where you'd like that magnet to be, and that's going to mean that when you drill into it with your pin vise, you see to the drill bit exactly where you want the hole to go and you've got the perfect spot to mount your corresponding magnet. So with our arms joining nicely to the torso, the torso piece is nearly complete, but of course there's another major element of every librarian missing and that is our power cables. Now of course there's nothing that looks like this in the Indominus box set, so we do have to slightly cheat here and I'm going to bring in some guitar wire, uh, which is a fantastic coiled gauged wire that just looks absolutely amazing. And what we want to do here is get that power cable mounting in the back of the backpack mounting plate, wrapping up and around the model and then mounting 
fitting into that base neck plate at the top of the power armor. To do this, we're gonna drill holes in both of those locations and then have the wire literally physically feeding around that arc. Now, it's really important that we do drill these holes because it gives it a fantastic physical bonding uh, and you're not just gluing it to the side of the power armor. So do get a pin vise, bring it in here and make sure you use a drill bit that's the same width as your guitar wire. Now I'm using a nice thick coiled guitar wire that has quite a malleable core but is still quite stiff and that's really great because that means that I can locate the guitar wire into the back section of the backpack and then wrap the wire around the torso using my pliers to bend that curve so that I'm actually fixing the shape of that wire into that perfect curve and that means that when this mounts in at both points of the model I'm not putting any torsion or stress on those joints because the wire doesn't want to spring back to a different shape, it's actually bent into that shape of the power coil. When you're drilling the hole for mounting the power cable on the neck piece of the power armor, a great way to seat your drill bit and make sure you don't gouge the whole region sliding over the place is to start with your drill bit at a 90 degree angle to the joins, to the piece of the plate that you're drilling into. Start drilling and then as you get deeper, rotate that drill bit around so that you're then on the line of where you want the cable to mount, which is about a 90 degree angle to the front of the model. That way your drill bit will seat and then as you finish that hole, it'll be perfect for mounting the power cable on the angle you want. With the first power cable done, it's just a matter of rinse and repeat for the second one, and then you're gonna have two fantastic power coils, and all of a sudden, this model is screaming librarian. So if you wanted to, you could leave your librarian here. We've got the hood, we've got the coils, and we've got some fantastic equipment, but I just wanted to push this model a little bit further. So I'm gonna cheat again, just a little bit, uh, and, I, and I wanted to grab a really old school banner that I had lying around from my fourth edition bits box. All of the librarians often have a huge piece of heraldry up above mounted to their backpack, and I couldn't resist using one of my old classic banners. So I brought in an old metal banner and mounted that to the top of the backpack. Another really important visual detail to really sell this model as a librarian and make sure it's not confused as a chaplain is to turn that Crozius Arcanum into a staff by extending the length of the rod. Now you can either do this by just drilling in some brass rod or find any kind of long cylindrical bit that you have lying around. I dug through my bits box, which I know is cheating, but it's fine. We could use brass rod, right? But I found something that looked a little better, which I think is like either an aerial rod off maybe a Space Marine Scout biker or or something, maybe it's a chaos thing, I don't know. It's cool, it's just a cylindrical rod that comes to a nice triangular pyramid point which has a little bit of detail and it worked perfectly for me. I chose to pin it by drilling a hole in the base of each of these cylinders and then putting a bit of steel rod in between and that way I'm not relying on just some plastic glue to contact to hold these two thin pieces together. With that staff extended and a quick drill of the barrels on the bolt pistol, our loadout is finished. And I really love that I can chop and change this model. I've got the staff arm, I've got the sword arm. Maybe I'll have the staff out when he's casting psychic powers and then pull the sword out when he's in combat. But I just, I really loved the idea of having an actual mounting point for the sheathed sword while he's using his staff. So I went and grabbed that power sword that is sheathed to the back of the Primaris Lieutenant, clipped off the peg and mounted a magnet in that and then put a second magnet position on the back of the Judicia torso. With the final details of this conversion coming together, I'm almost ready to reveal the finished model, but those of you familiar with my current army will know he is destined to lead a mighty force of Blood Ravens. And in my excitement to get this force ready for the dawn of war, I've managed to rope fellow Blood Raven fan Pete the Wargamer into some Indominus character kit bashing. Hey there Zorktrons, Pete the Wargamer here, crafter of conversions and purveyor of dead animal bits. When Lockie and I were chatting about ways to use these Indomitus bits, his Blood Ravens really got me inspired. As a big fan of Dawn of War 1 and 2, not you three, I decided to put together a kit bash of legendary chapter master Gabriel Angelos. So head over to my channel to see how I help this iconic character cross the Rubicon Primaris, and hopefully one day soon we'll get to see him and Lockie's librarian fight back to back in the defense of the Imperium. Back to you, Lockie. Thanks, Pete. Holy wow, doesn't Gabriel look amazing. If you guys are looking for fantastic conversion guides and painting tutorials for 40k, definitely go and check out Pete the Wargamer. He's got an insane backlog of great content, and this week he's really helped inspire me to nail this librarian. 
How good was that? My return to form with converting. Conversions were always my favorite thing uh, when I kind of first played as a teenager. I was always chopping stuff up and making weird things. Uh, and it was, it was where I kind of felt most creative because I wasn't a very good painter either. So I just, yeah, diving back into that world. Obviously I've been playing Middle Earth for so long and there's just not much conversion potential with those models. Back to 40K, kit bashing. Ah, oh, the creative like restriction too of just using the Indominus box. It really kind of got my brain cooking and, and just the whole the whole kind of concept of only using those bits and needing to get all of those key fundamental elements to tell the story of this model so that you look at it and you go, librarian. So obviously the book, right? So getting the litanies of hate from the chaplain, turning it into a spell book, that's a key kind of piece. Obviously, you know, the big staff using the, uh, the Rosarius Arcane, whatever the friggin' chaplain thing is called, taking that and sort of extending it, uh, and then, you know, bringing in the guitar wire and getting all those elements on the model. Uh, absolutely loved it. A huge shout out to Pete for kind of inspiring me to do this. We were kind of just talking about some cool stuff we could do, and obviously, you know, I love Dawn of War, and that's sort of where my content is tending, uh, and Pete's a huge Dawn of War fan as well, and, and loves Blood Ravens, and so we got kind of cooking, and we were like, oh, we want to do some cool conversions, uh, and uh, yeah, so Pete's done an awesome Gabriel Angelus, which you guys should definitely go and check out. And it was really fun kind of working together. And, you know, he'd be sending me pics of his game coming along and I'm like, oh, he's my librarian. And yeah, so it was, it was a really, really fun challenge. Um, and uh, I just, yeah, I, I love stuff that's motivated by a story or an idea. It really allows for some fun, creative expression. So I'm super happy with how the conversions turned out. I love the paint job as well. We'll cover that in a painting tutorial next week. Um, but yeah, I cannot wait one day to see this model and hopefully Pete's model together on a battlefield, killing all or uh, Necrons, probably. So uh, maybe Death Guard. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. Uh, so uh, hopefully that will happen when the world goes back to normal sometime in the future. So huge shout out to Pete. Make sure you guys do go and check his video. I've linked that down in the description, the top comment, and it'll be in the end card. Uh, so definitely have a look at his amazing Gabriel Angelos. And, uh, and yeah, thank you so much for tuning into this part of the journey. Painting tutorial will be out next week. I'll link that over here. Pete's video is over there. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time right here on Zorpa Zorp Gaming. Cheers, guys. Yes.